Hey guys, it's Tina, my homesteading project, and uh, I had a request. Uh, someone wanted to see our barns, so I'm going to go out and show you the buildings that we've built out there. But first, I wanted to show you, it's really funny. Um, my husband thinks it's hilarious, Eric thinks it's funny, that the two baby dolings that we are um, bottle feeding, I'm mama. So the second they see me or they hear me, they just come running. So I wanted to show you guys. It's really cute. So here we go. Hey, babies. Here they come. Here they come, my little girls. Hello, girls. There's Poppy and Sweet Pea. Hello, girls. Yeah, I don't have anything for you right now. No, I don't have a bottle. Hello, honey. Sweet pea. Hello, baby girl. Hello, sweetie girl. These are my super sweet girls. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, we're going to go out to the barn. And here's some of my other girls. Hey, Lily. Oh, that's attractive. Hey, Lily girl. And Daphne and little Charlie. He's coming along really. Nicely. Hello, Violet. Hello, baby girl. Hello, baby girl. Hello, Daphne. Oh, my girls are with me. And there's her mama, Honey Lemon, and her three babies. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Everybody's coming along really nicely. A oh, little breezy. Oh, shoot. Here comes the wind. Okay. Well, actually, here. Well, this is the first building. This is our buck barn. And uh, this is Logan's area. And over here, this is all his hay. His grass hay. Grass alfalfa mix for him. And so, uh, this is his area. And we built this. It's just a three-sided three-sided shelter with, uh, you know, plywood roof, angled roof. And as you can see, we've got a tarp on the roof there. Eric was in and out of the hospital uh, most of the summer and fall uh, last year, so we did not get our tin roof on there, so we just covered it with a tarp, but it's held up really nicely. Now here's the thing. The tarp that we put on the girls' barn we had 50, 60 mile an hour winds from the northeast last week. And it found a hole somewhere and it ripped this sucker right off. So the other day the boys and I had to just come out in the wind and it was starting to rain and just slap it back on there the best that we could. So it doesn't look real pretty right now, but it's serving its purpose till we can get the metal roof on. But the girls have a fenced enclosure here for when we need to kind of pen them up, but we don't want them to be locked into the barn. This is made out of the same, all this material, all these uh, log home pieces were here on the property when we got here. They're just kind of rejects and discards from a uh, log home place, kind of miscuts and odd and end. Um, lengths and so we just kind of sorted through them and we've pieced this all together so the actual shell of the building did not cost us anything other than um, you know I've got some bolts holding it together here at the opening and that type of thing but the shell itself did not cost us anything um, then inside here we have all of our stalls now let's see we have one two three four five stalls and our in my milk stand this is where the little girls are living right now and they've got their wall feeder for their hay. They actually have a bucket of hay there too and their water bucket. And inside of the barn we did uh, the OSB, just the cheap 7 16 you know, $10 a sheet OSB and the same with the roof. We did the OSB too. So, um, and we use these kind of as headers across the barn 
um, to hold the load. And these are really super sturdy. I mean, really, in a windstorm or anything, this is where you want to be because this is super secure. Although, this summer we will be redoing this roof because, as you can see, it's very low headroom. you got to keep ducking under these because you do not want to hit your head on this. I've done that many times and uh, it is not fun. So we're actually going to remove three of them and leave one as a header and then just run um, our two by sixes on top of these to raise the height of the roof. So that will be a little bit nice. So this entire roof is coming off this summer and we'll be redoing the roof. But all my stalls are made from pallets that I got for free. So that didn't cost me anything. This lumber was free. All we really had to buy was uh, the OSB. So anyway, that is uh, where my bottle babies are living right now. And then over here, this long stall belongs to Lily and Violet. They go in there and my my gates for most of my bigger stalls are just cattle panels that we've cut in pieces and just hooks and you know eye hooks uh, that we use to attach them and then I use this uh, plumber's tape or hurricane strapping whatever you want to call it um, as my hinges with a couple screws so this pallet was all free all of this was all free even the uh, support lumber up here we got that from farmer Fred when he was cleaning out his garage he had a bunch of lumber brought it over and asked if we could use it we were like sure so we've got this stall here this stall I don't remember the dimensions um, five by I don't know ten feet um, this was a longer um, stall. These are all seven by eight feet. This one and that one over there are both seven by eight feet. So yeah, they're really large stalls, but we like to give our girls lots of room. And sometimes we have two in one and sometimes we have, you know, babies in one. So anyway, now I did put this up before the kids were born so that they could not climb through the pallets. So I have um, some fencing that I purchased up here and I already had fencing up here because I put the, the feeders that I that I built for outside and for Logan I built another set for in here so I've got one facing this way and one facing that way and I did have to put this bungee on top because the goats would just pop this lid up and eat out of the top and then they get hay in their water. So um, we did have to bungee the top. Um, Honey Lemon and Daphne are living in this stall right now and uh, all the babies, all the rest of the babies that are not bottle fed are in the other stall at night. So, oh, and I just attached these to the wall, these pallets to the wall with these, I don't even know what these are called. I found them at the hardware store and thought they would work. So, um, girls, see, they follow me everywhere. I don't know what those are called, but that's how I attached all the pallets to the walls. And my milk stand just goes right here in the middle um, until summertime. A lot of times in the summertime, I'll move it out into the, the pen area just to give them more room in here. But it works out real good just to open the gate in the morning, let them jump up here, eat their grain, milk them out. So, so here's the last stall. Well, I guess I shouldn't say last stall, but here's the stall. Usually honey lemons in this stall, but right now all the babies are using it at night because I've got the mamas and the babies separated at night uh, for milking purposes. And they have their buckets in the winter. They're plugged in for heat. We don't really need that now, although who knows with weather. They all have separate buckets that are heated for the winter. Now this little cubby area that I have between two stalls I just kind of put a little gate up here that I can kind of attach and keep them out of the feed. But that's my feed bucket and my homemade apple cider vinegar that I put in their water. 
and you know just a crate to sit on my tools you know my pitchfork my rakes my shovels um, I'll go right there yes get out of there come on baby come on baby back up so I do have to attach this Woo! sorry hold on a second I do have to attach this did I zoom in with a bungee cord I did zoom in sorry about that um, I do have to attach it just with a bungee cord to that pole just so the goats won't get in there because they will get that lid off and they will chomp down that grain so this is our last stall and again made from a pallet and we just I had a piece of this is actually was free this was on the bottom of a pallet one of the larger pallets so that that piece of lumber was free um, and then on the inside I've got the fencing and uh, I've put up some cardboard for and of course the goats have already chomped a hole in the middle but to block the wind because this area here I have all prepped for another project which I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet it'll be a surprise but I did have my milk stand in this area and the goat's grain in this area. This was kind of my utility room. See, I've got shelves up there that I've got some of my supplies, my hoof trimmers and, you know, all that kind of junk is up there. Um, brushes and towels and, and my kitting kit and all that stuff's up on the shelves. And I did have my tools hanging over here, but um, I had to empty it out because I have another project in the works. So you'll just have to wait and see what it is. I'm so excited. I hope it happens soon, but we'll have to wait and see. Baby girl, what are you doing? Why are you chewing on that? But see, they follow me everywhere. I was out walking around picking up the property the other day. They were just following me around like crazy. They just follow me everywhere. Stop chewing on that. I'm going to have to fix that now. Anyway, so that is our barn. And we do have windows cut in the back. We have two of the windows covered right now because we had such, so much wind. Um, and it usually comes from the west there. So we did cover those um, windows except for one to give some ventilation. Now over here, oh, well this is our hoop house, but the tarp ripped and came off. We're going to redo that idea here this summer too, but that's where all the girls' hay was for the winter. Obviously you can see they got into what was left. We have a couple stacks around the property here and there. There's some there. There's some way over there. There's a pallet of hay over in the front yard because we got it so late in the season that there was already snow, so we just put it in the front and we had to haul it back here, which kind of stunk, but oh well, what can you do when you got other stuff to worry about? Now this is our chicken coop <coughs> and duck house, and we've got a fence around the pool um, and a just cattle panel gate more free pallets that I used with chicken wire and um, this was the brooding area that I kind of built for my chicken last year it wasn't very successful but the ducks go in there out of the out of the sun sometimes and I can always utilize that for growing out chicks and things like that later in the future but this is this is not um, the ducks come out into this pasture and the chickens go out there and actually we need to let them out the girls, please, please just stay there, okay? Don't upset the ducks. We are going to let out the ducks. That's gonna be loud. All right, everybody out. Everybody out. There they go. And of course, the goats are in here. Anyway, this side we use for the ducks. And there's our little nesting box, feeder, water, food. We'll let the chickens out too. The chickens go out into the corral. Just because I don't want my drake to try to mate my chickens. Because that would be bad. So I have the chickens. And there you go, girls. Out they go. So I have my chickens and my... Uh, duck separated so 
I know that some people have had trouble with it, so just as a prevention, I just made sure that they have a separate area. Now the chickens have a hanging water bucket, and they have a hanging feeder, and their nest boxes are over there against the wall. Their roost runs along that wall there. And again, this is just built the same way the others are. Here I've got a timer for my light just to make sure. The daylight's getting longer, so I probably won't be using that. This is where the 55-gallon um, barrel for their automatic watering system will eventually go. I didn't get that done last year um, before, before winter. So come on, girls. You're not supposed to be in here. Come on. But anyway, so that's our setup. And of course, the girls have their little school entertainment center over there. Girls, come on, out of there, out of there. Come on, out, thank you. So anyway, that's our setup. The girls goat barn, the buck barn, and the chicken coop. And as I said, you know, a homestead is a work in progress. We, uh, we still have a lot to do. And, you know, building this from scratch, it, it's taking a lot longer than we thought it would. <laughs> Which doesn't everything always take longer than you think it will. But, uh, oh, I guess I could show you this. Um, this is our corral area where we do put the goats from time to time when, uh, when we want to, you know, run to town or something. We want them to be loose. But our, that's our little shelter that we have that we built out of all free materials and I do have a video on that too so you can just watch that one separate but there's my duckies but anyway so I hope that helps um you wanted to see see our setup in our barns so hopefully if you have any questions or comments just go ahead and uh, leave them below and I'll answer those and uh you guys have a great afternoon and we will talk to you later. And as always, remember, God is good. We'll talk to you later. Bye.